Good morning, friend. Welcome back to Acre Homestead. We have a really fun day planned today. The first thing I'm going to do is get some bread in the oven. I am doing a ton of recipe testing. If you were with me yesterday, you saw most of what I started after I was done in the garden. I sat down, ate dinner, I was gonna watch TV all evening, and then I got back up and I started making more bread, and I'm really glad I did, because that's what's going in the oven first. We are going to spend quite a bit of time outside, quite a bit of time in the kitchen. Um, let me show you what I did this morning, and then I will bring you back to where we are right now. At 6.20 this morning, I pulled out the rolls that we started yesterday together. So if you missed it, we started by doing a bunch of recipe testing on my one hour dinner roll recipe. My goal is to try to come up with a recipe that you make the dough, you shape the dough, you put it in the freezer, and then you can pull them out of the freezer, let them rise, and then throw them in the oven. So we made those together. After we were done doing that, I spent the afternoon with you in the garden. And then, like I said, I came back in, I was gonna relax, but then I thought, you know what? I might as well get some French bread <laughs> in the freezer as well. So I did four different adaptations to my one hour dinner roll recipe, and I did those exact same adaptations to my French bread recipe. So the goal today is to have all of these different recipes rise, and well, thaw first, and then rise, and then we're gonna bake them up and see how they do. It is a lot of work to do recipe testing and this is the first round of a couple rounds that I end up doing to perfect this technique. So at first, these are the rolls. We've got the four different adaptations here. I don't wanna bake all of them because that's just way too much bread that Josh and I can eat. So I'm going to thaw and prove four rolls from each adaptation of the recipe and then I am going to thaw and proof each one of the French bread recipes that I did so that we can see how well they're gonna turn out. We're also gonna make lunch together. I'm gonna to use some of this roll recipe dough and we're gonna turn it into a lunch. This is the rolls that we're gonna use for lunch. And you can see I have this parchment paper and I have marked what each of the adaptations are so that I can kind of see how they are affected by turning these rolls into something different other than just rolls. We're gonna use this dough and turn them into chicken bacon ranch bakes. So those are the rolls and here are the French bread. First though, I need to have some coffee because it is early. So I'm gonna go get ready and then I will meet you back in the kitchen. All right, so at 6.25 a.m., I took these two French loaves out of the oven and they are ready to go into the oven. We've got two different batches here, I should say. This one has double the yeast. This one has the regular amount of yeast. So when I push on the bread, it is telling me it is ready. It's proved enough because when I push my finger in, it bounces back, but it does leave a little bit of an indent versus over here. These are not, this recipe is not ready to go in at all. It's the, it's still pretty dense. So that needs to rise for a bit longer. I do have these two rolls, I think, these two set of rolls that are ready to go into the oven as well. Yeah, that feels good. And I think this one is ready to go. That feels good. I need to do one more step. These two are not ready yet, I don't believe. They don't, yeah, that's pretty dense still. I've got one more thing I need to do to the French bread and the rolls before they go into the oven while the oven's preheating. I wanna make sure that both of the recipes cook at the same temperature. They do, they both cook at 400 degrees, but I need to get an egg wash going so let me tell you what happened at 5 a.m. this morning. My dogs sleep in our bedroom with us and they were acting really weird, really weird. It was, I think it was like 5 a.m. It was, the sun was not up yet. And 
Josh gets up, he's like, are you okay? Are you sick? What's going on? And Josh looks out the window and there are deer in the garden. Josh runs out, no shoes on or anything, and he's like yelling at them and like, go, go, go. The deer fence is going in currently. Yesterday we were out there planting pumpkins and squash and they were working on putting in the deer fence. I kept going, I was like, I don't know if we should go forward with this this year, if we should wait a year. No, Josh was the one that was like, you know, I think we need to move forward with the deer fence and he was absolutely right. I have not been out there yet to see if they have destroyed anything. I am a little bit worried to go out there, but I was very grateful for my dogs. I was, I felt a little bad because I was kind of annoyed with them. I was like, I'm trying to sleep, I'm trying to sleep. And then come to find out they were trying to protect my garden. All right, so what I need to do to these baguettes, I need to mark down what time it is too because of how long they've been out of the, the freezer. So where'd my post-it go? Recipe testing is a lot of fun, but it is very detail-oriented. So what time is it right now? It's exactly 10 a.m. So this has been out of the oven seven, eight, nine, ten for three and a half hours. These two French loaves that are ready to go in, and the and two of the trays of rolls. So we're gonna make one dinner lunch today too. So we're gonna be in here, recipe testing, spend time out in the garden, um, make lunch. I feel like there's more things that I wanted to get done today that I can't think of right now, but we will just start going about the day. So 6.25 to 10 a.m. I have never put an egg wash on my French bread before, but I could, last couple times I baked it, this is actually my sister's recipe, the last couple times I baked it, it didn't get very brown, and I always put an egg wash on my rolls, and they get really beautiful, and so I thought, you know what, I think I'm going to try it as well. This is only the first round of recipe testing. I've got a lot more to do. This is going to give me a lot of information, but once I kind of get something that I think works really well, then I will, you know, run the recipe quite a few times. I'll have some friends, family make the recipe and just make sure it works. But I'm going to put an egg wash on this because I've been wanting to do this since I've made this recipe for the first time. I have on the parchment paper, you saw me right here on the bottom side, what each one of these recipes is, the variation of it. Probably didn't need two eggs, but. While I'm in the kitchen waiting for the oven to preheat, I'm gonna go ahead and just get our lunch slash dinner going. I don't know if we're gonna eat this for lunch, or did probably lunch, because it's only 10 a.m but it'll also give us some leftovers. I'm going to make a homemade version of, if you were with me when we made those croissant chicken pockets, I used store-bought croissant dough because I had it left over from a recipe for making some appetizers. And I thought I could maybe make a homemade version with some homemade bread. So since I have so much bread that I'm testing, I'm going to go ahead and use it to make this recipe and if it doesn't turn out absolutely perfect because we are recipe testing these doughs, it's going to be fine because it's just going to be for Josh and I to enjoy for lunch. So it'll be good enough for our food. So I just put in a block of cream cheese in here. I'm going to pop this in the microwave maybe 30-45 seconds just to let it get soft. I'm going to make these pizza pockets into bacon ranch, not pizza pockets, chicken pockets. I have some bacon that I pulled out of the freezer that I just popped in the microwave for just about two minutes to get it a little bit more crispy. So we're gonna add just a couple slices of bacon. And then in the refrigerator, I had some onion that I had used part of it for another recipe and it needs to be used up. So I'm just gonna cut this really thinly. If I didn't have this in the refrigerator that needed to be used up, 
I would just grab some minced onion, some like dried minced onion, but I have this, so we're gonna use this. I'm cutting it really, really thin because I'm not gonna saute this first before I stuff it in the chicken mixture. So in here, I put some pre-cooked chicken that I had to our cream cheese that's at the bottom. I have some homemade ranch powder. I'm gonna put one and a half teaspoons in there. This is more just me getting in the kitchen, using up what I have and being kind of creative and having fun with it. What probably would have been really good would be to probably use about half that amount of cream cheese and then the equivalent, that same amount of sour cream or mayonnaise to kind of give it a more saucy texture, but we're just gonna run with it. I'm gonna get that cheddar cheese in our bowl. And that's the filling, so that was really, really easy. I probably made a little bit too much filling because I only have eight rolls to fill. Maybe I'll just try to fill them really full. I'm just gonna take a second and mix all of this together. You could get really creative with this. You could make pizza pockets and use mozzarella cheese, some marinara sauce in here, and some pepperonis, or you could make veggie pizza pockets. You could do breakfast ones with some scrambled eggs, cheese, and sausage. I'm just going with this because this is what I had on hand and this is what sounded good. So get this mixed together. I almost forgot to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm not going to add any garlic powder because there is garlic powder in the ranch mix. Now that our rolls and bread are in the oven, we're gonna fill our pockets. I have one of every test out here. I put what they are over here. I don't think these two are technically ready, but I'm just doing this for our lunch, so I'm not worried about that. These ones are definitely ready to go up. I'm only gonna take one, one kind out at a time so that I don't forget what is what. A little bit. Got our chicken mixture. Hopefully I didn't make too much of it. If you don't like onions that much, you could either saute them or you could use minced onion. That would work really well for this too. If you don't want quite such an onion flavor, but we love onions around here. Pinch the bottoms of these little pockets. Try not to have any holes just so that we don't get our cheese oozing out. I'm gonna put these back in the same spot I got them out of so that I know which ones are which. I'm not really doing this for recipe testing. This is more just for you know our lunch, but it doesn't hurt to have the knowledge to see how these cook up and how well they do. This right here is why I want to have dough like this ready to go in my freezer whenever I want it so that I can make a homemade easy meal at any time. This is the only cooking I'm gonna be doing. My focus is more on recipe testing. That's where my brain is not on cooking meals for us. And so I can whip up a really delicious easy meal because I have these pre-convenience items on hand. The chicken was canned chicken that I canned up from a pasture raised chicken. And that's another convenience item that I was very skeptical on canned chicken when I first did it. And I absolutely love it. I will admit canned ground meat is not my favorite. I know some of my friends absolutely love it, but for me, it's just kind of a textural thing, but I love pre-cooking sausage and ground beef and having pre-cooked ground meat in my freezer so that if I need to pull out some sausage or something like that, I don't have to necessarily go through the effort of cooking it. Just like I pulled out some bacon, case in point, I had some pre-cooked bacon in my freezer. 
I didn't have to, you know, dirty up a pan and make it smell like bacon in here. Not that bacon smells bad, but sometimes, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily want your house to smell entirely like bacon. Okay, I'm going to get all these filled. This is not how I thought this recipe test was gonna go. In my head, I thought I knew which recipe was going to work the best. And now I still have four more <laughs> raw sets of testing to go to cook. But the one that I thought was probably gonna be the least effective looks like the best. This is why recipe testing <laughs> is so important because you never know what way is gonna work the best until you try it out. When I did research on this, I was looking online for recipes that you make the dough, throw it in the freezer and bake it. And I could not find any solid recipes. They were all just talking about different methods on how to like adapt your own recipe. And so that's what I'm doing. And I needed to, I had to, I'm trying four different variations here to figure out which one I think is gonna work the best. And then I will then take the one that works the best and I will do some tweaks to it and try to replicate it multiple times just to make sure it works. But it's just crazy that the one that I honestly thought was going to work the least is doing the absolute best. Now, I think this one is ready to go in the oven, this test. I already put an egg wash on it. Uh, yeah, it could probably go in the oven. This one's not ready and I am going to just cut this parchment paper here. I think this is ready to go into the oven. And one cool thing is my notes are staying on the parchment paper. I wasn't sure, because I've never done that before, put written on parchment paper in the oven and it works just fine. So these have not risen as much as I would like, but they look like they're ready. They are bouncing back but keeping their shape like the indent just a little bit so I think these need to go into the oven. I'm really itching to get outside but I'm not going to go outside until I have all of these out of the oven and I'm going to let them completely cool before we cut into them. That's the real test. So I'm going to just take this and set this on the counter and let this continue to rise. I'm going to make sure I keep my post-it with it. And then I'm gonna put this in the oven after I score it. And I am glad I put the egg wash on there because it's definitely leaving a nice, beautiful crust on this bread. I'm really itching to get outside, but I'm not gonna go outside until all that stuff's out of the oven because I don't wanna burn it. And I have a tendency to do that. So I ordered a hat for myself because I've been wearing Josh's hat and Josh's hat is way too big for me. So it keeps blowing off. Oh, this is interesting. This is not how I thought this was gonna be. And I just went on Amazon and I ordered one, one that had a wide brim. I've, ne I've never been a hat person before. But it is so sunny up here that I definitely, oh, and it has a little bow, a little bow on the back. 
I've always liked bows. Oh, and it does have, I can put a chin strap on it if I need to, but this is not what I was expecting. Maybe I should do like this. I've never been a hat person before. I think it's cute. I got it because it had this little bow in the back and then the top was open so that I could put my hair through it. That was one thing I didn't really love about Josh's hat is it had a top and my hair would get in the way. So I've never really been a hat person and I didn't really need a hat for my last garden because my last garden was in the shade so much. And so <laughs> I didn't really have this problem of it being super sunny. And I really need a hat for this garden because sun is fantastic and I want the sun for the growth of the plants. But for my face, I need a little bit more protection. So I went with this one. I think it's cute. I can link it down below if you're interested in it. But I got it because mostly because of the bow. I thought the bow was cute. The only problem is it's kind of hitting my shoulders, so I don't know if I'm supposed to wear it a little bit more like this so it doesn't hit my shoulders. I'm just going to have to get used to wearing a hat. So this is kind of fun, though. I'm excited to wear it outside when we get to go outside. I think that our, I think I should probably rotate these chicken pockets. I probably should have put them on a cookie sheet, but I really, you know, I didn't have one and I thought that I could just make them fit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the oven, the ovens off because I just pulled out this beautiful test right here. This is why recipe testing is so exciting because I'm so happy with how this one turned out. I obviously we need to cut into it to decide which one is going to be the best in the end. But this one I didn't think was gonna do so well. This is actually the one that I thought was gonna do the well the best before we got started. And then after we got started, I baked it. I thought that this one was gonna do the best, but now I'm really happy with how that is looking. So time will tell. I want these to completely cool before we cut into them. We still have one more French bread to go in the oven and four more rolls. I don't think that I'm gonna like the way that those bake up, but I keep being proven wrong. I did pull out our chicken pockets for lunch. I'm not sure why the, those two in the middle did not brown like the rest of them did. I put the exact same egg wash on them, but I think they're gonna taste really good. So I am gonna set a timer on my phone for an hour, because I'm gonna come in and probably bake up the rest of the bread in an hour. But I have written down how long both of these ended up taking to bake, so I know that, okay. Really exciting. Now it's time to go outside. And I've got a little bit of iced coffee here to keep the motivation strong. <laughs> this was supposed to be a short little thing of me getting this off here and I cannot get this battery off. Josh is at work today, so I can't even ask him. Let me show you what we're working with so we can see a good before and after. I not only want to clean up around these raised beds, but I also want to clean in the raised beds. So this here is where the previous owner had their garden, and I'm grateful for it because it was an area where this fall I could plant my garlic and we've got two beds of garlic. You can see that they need some serious attention. They need to be weeded. So I'm gonna to get to that. That is why I'm attempting an experiment with landscape fabric this year, because this is a lot of work right here. But you can see just how deep this grass is. It's in the dandelions and the, the grass is just taking over along with oregano. I found this the other day. There is oregano everywhere in here. I can weed whack it down. I'm not gonna harvest it right now, but I could, but there's so much it will grow. I can harvest it later. I'm just not gonna get to that today because today's goal is to get all these weed, uh, grass taken care of, just kind of bring it down a little bit and we can harvest the oregano later. There's so much oregano. It is all of these really bright green spots that is oregano. See how the grass is all the way up? I mean, that's a good 12, 14 inches and it just needs to be taken care of because these are the strawberry beds 
And I want to also clean out the strawberry beds. You can see there's some weeds in this one. The strawberries in this bed didn't, didn't thrive too well this year. But all the other beds, they're looking really good. But there's also tons of weeds. So we need to get in there and we need to get this taken care of. I can just show you how deep this grass is all the way up to my knee almost. And then I need to try to get into the blueberry patch as well and try to clean that up as well if we can today. So this is the project we're gonna get to now. There is something really satisfying about weed whacking. I really enjoy weed whacking. It seems a little silly, but it's one of those tasks that doesn't take a lot of mental effort and you can see a big transformation in a short amount of time. It can go from overgrown and a jungly mess to something that looks neat and tidy and well-groomed. So this is definitely something that I've wanted to do for about two weeks now. Clearly it's gotten away from me, but I just didn't have the time until today. One of the reasons why we chose not to put grass around our raised beds and we chose to do the stone is just because the sheer amount of work it takes to maintain this. I knew from just experience from last summer that this is a lot of work, that weed whacking around here has to be done to keep this under control about every two weeks or so. And with the size of my new garden, I knew that I just didn't have the time to invest that kind of time into it. And so the stone was something we chose just for ease of maintenance. But for this littler garden, I really, I do enjoy getting out here and weed whacking. Now, don't worry. I am mowing down this oregano, like I said, but I do come out here about a week later and we harvest a bunch of it and we get it in the freeze dryer. Oregano grows like a weed, so the fact that I mowed it down quite a bit here is not going to hurt it at all, and there'll still be plenty of oregano for me to harvest at l more than a year's worth of oregano. So now I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning up some of the other things around here just to tidy this area up while I weed whack. So instead of just weed whacking around things, I'm trying to kind of clean up as things get in my way so that the, this project can look nice once it's done. That worked out pretty well. I got over half of this area weed whacked but my battery just died. <laughs> the convenience of battery versus a plug is you can maneuver a lot easier and gas smells bad. So I love the battery poweredness of this, but I was not able to get the whole thing done. Wait, yeah. When I push the button, it says empty. So I gotta now figure out how to get this off. I'm going to bring this inside to continue to charge so that I can finish. Man, I don't know why this thing is so difficult difficult. Everything about this is amazingly easy except for for some reason I'm having a difficulty with this battery. Got it. So while this is charging I'm going to start weeding the strawberry beds and I'm going to use this thing. I think this is a new tool I got and I think this is going to work really well. So now we're going to tackle this raised bed. This has the elephant garlic in it and you can see just how good and lush it's looking. I'm really happy with it. I am really grateful that I had a space to plant this garlic. I wasn't sure where I was gonna put it last fall. And then I realized I could just use the previous owner's garden beds in order to get this garlic in the ground. So we will be harvesting this garlic together probably mid-July. I harvested my garlic July 15th last year and I'm, sh I'm sure it's gonna be about that time this year when we harvest it as well. And my goal for this elephant garlic is to turn all of it into garlic powder. And then the smaller, just like your regular size garlic heads, I'll use those for fresh eating. And I will use those to turn those into the garlic pucks where I take the garlic, fresh garlic, blend it in the food processor. And I put those in little puck shapes in the freezer. That has been my absolute favorite way to preserve homegrown garlic, and I want to do that again this year. So that is the regular garlic, this is the elephant garlic, and these beds are looking a lot better. 
all of these weeds I am going to go ahead and give to the chickens and I'm going to let them enjoy some fresh greens. I think it's a good time to get this third French bread and these rolls in the oven. They look great. We will see how well they cook up. I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to cook them on the same cookie sheet. I have the oven preheating and I think, oh, I'm hungry. I'm gonna try one of our chicken pockets. And let's cut into this bread. Let's see how it is looking. Here's the French bread. Oh, that looks really good. Out of the three that I've baked already, I can tell that we have a clear winner, and it is this one, which is one of the ones that I was not expecting to win. So I'm really excited about that. It needs a little bit more work, but we are getting there. This one is a little bit dense at the bottom. I don't think that it, it didn't get the proof that I want on it. This one is very soft. This one's just kind of a little bit dense. And this one is a little bit dense. I'm super happy with that. Look at that, how it springs right back. That's great. I wanna give this one that looks like the winner a taste test. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm gonna break open the rolls. That's pretty nice. I think I like this one better. This one, I don't like. It's interesting because the, the rolls are out of the two. The one that I think just looks better is not the same as the French bread. This roll recipe. Is so good. This is the one that I think looked the best. Here's the one that matches the same method I did for the French bread that I like the best. Hmm. When you have bread that is properly baked and proved, when you squish it, it should bounce back which that is perfect. And that one's a little bit more on the dense side. This one's going right back to its original shape. So I think we have a clear winner on this one too. The taste on both of those, when I taste them, to me they taste the same. I can't really tell a difference, quite honestly. But when you look at the technicalities of baking bread, the one that bounces back is the one that is properly proved and properly cooked. And here is the French bread. This is the one that I've liked the best so far. This is the second. And you can see, look at that. It just goes straight back to its original shape. This one does too, but it's definitely a lot denser. This one's a lot softer. So, so we have a clear winner. We have a clear winner with both the rolls and with the French bread. So what I'm gonna do now, so this is kind of the first stage. So now I'm gonna take this clear winner. I'm gonna put the the one batch in the oven, but I don't think that one's gonna be a winner at all. Sorry if you can hear my dishwasher. I turned my dishwasher back on, or I turned it on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the clear winner here and I am going to do it a couple more times just to make sure that it's foolproof and that it's working. So that is kind of like behind the scenes of how recipe testing works. It takes some time, but it is worth it. And I'm really, really excited about having the possibility of having homemade rolls that are in the freezer that I can pull out and I know that they're gonna turn out well every time. So this is really a really big step. A lot of this is going to be turned into breadcrumbs. I currently have no breadcrumbs in my house right now 
So I'm excited to dry some of this out and turn it into breadcrumbs. And then what I probably will do with some of this is I'm gonna probably make a baked French toast so that I could do maybe uh, one for this weekend, one for later, and then um, I can have a freezer meal. I am hungry though, so right now I want to try our homemade pizza pocket. Or not pizza pocket, this is just a chicken pocket. Smells good. Mm-hmm. That's delicious. Yeah, I don't think this test batch is gonna do much. Talk about a productive day. I'm not even done. I think I'm gonna sit down, eat some lunch, and I've got a bunch of computer work I need to do. I'm having a party this weekend at my house, so I need to get the house clean. So I think I'm gonna call it for, well, I wanna finish uh, weed whacking, but I can't do that until my battery charges. So I'm probably gonna hang out inside, eat some lunch. I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. As soon as I have this whole recipe, freezer, bread, dough ready, I will share it with you. I just wanna make sure that I perfect this recipe before I do that. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I am grateful for you, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.